Hello. So I have something a little bit different for you today. So for context, for those of you who are coming to our puzzles directly from our YouTube channel, we release these puzzles daily, but also once per month, we create a document called Gas Leak, and that compiles the puzzles from the previous month and also usually contains five bonus puzzles. And where those bonus puzzles come from is they are typically puzzles that either got set for gas initially by one of the three of us and either didn't make it through testing because they were a little bit too difficult or sometimes didn't make it through testing because they were too difficult to typeset and would have required people to use different software that they're not used to to solve them. Uh, maybe they were too similar to another puzzle that we had released very recently. Or occasionally we'll just set things that we know are going to come out not quite suitable for the main series of gas for one reason or another, and we'll just earmark them to go into gas leak at the end of the month. And this is a puzzle um, that I suspect Philip knew when he was creating it would probably not end up in gas because it actually is quite challenging. And a number of people have asked us to uh, give a walkthrough explanation of this puzzle. This was one of the bonuses from Gas Leak 35, which comp uh, was a compilation of the gas puzzles from December 2023, plus some bonus puzzles. And this was the first bonus puzzle from that document. And I am going to try to walk you through it today. It is a bit trickier than what we normally do, so buckle up and get ready. So we have Dutch Whispers and German Whispers. So German Whispers, digits along each of these thicker green lines, have to have a difference of five or more if they're adjacent. So for instance, these two digits have to have a difference of five or more, so this can only be seven, eight, or nine. These have to have a difference of five or more, so these can only be seven, eight, or nine, and so on. Digits along Dutch whisper lines, which are these thinner orange lines, have to have a difference of four or more. So it's similar to a German whisper, except that it is slightly less restricted. So we're going to start with the German whisper lines. So these two vertical German whispers cover almost an entire column each. There is only one digit that can never go on a German whisper line in Sudoku, and that's the digit five. There are no numbers that can go next to five on one of these lines because there are no numbers in Sudoku that have a difference of five or more with the number five. You also can um, color the digits for high-low alternation right away because along a German whisper line, the digits always alternate between being lower than five and being higher than five in order to have a big enough difference from their neighbors. Last little trick with German whispers is that if you have a line like this that covers nearly an entire row or an entire column or an entire region, certain digits are forced to go on the ends of the line because they can only go next to one other number and can't go between two different neighbors. And those digits are four and six. Six is only allowed to go next to one. There are no other digits that are far enough away from six. And four is only allowed to go next to nine. There are no other digits that are far enough away from four. So we need to put four and six on the ends so that they're not between two other numbers. So this is a low digit that's on the end. That's going to be our four, and that will be our six. So we have to place a one next to our six and a nine next to our four to have a big enough difference. Our last low digit is a three. We still need to place a seven and eight. Seven can't go in between the two and the three because three is too close to seven. So we need to put our eight here and our seven here. And I'm going to go through this one a little bit more quickly, but it's the same principle. And in fact, this puzzle is fully symmetric, which is going to help us a bit as we solve. I'm going to primarily focus on the left side and just kind of go through the deductions on the mirror side a little bit more quickly. So here we have a four and a six with a one and a nine next to them. Our last high digit is seven, and these cells have to contain two and three in this order. Now here's the part where a lot of folks, including myself, got stuck. So let's turn our attention to these Dutch whisper lines. Now the difference between German whispers and Dutch whispers from a solving perspective is that with Dutch whispers, you actually can have the digit five along a line. It's difficult because it can only go next to the digits one and nine, so it's pretty restricted, but it is allowed, unlike German whispers. So because these two lines cover an entire column each, 
The question to ask is going to be, where can we put five on these lines and where can we rule five out? So let's pencil in one and nine in this row. Now I said earlier that five on these lines has to go next to one and or nine. There are no other digits that it's allowed to go next to. So there are only two basic positions that we can put five in on this line. Either we could put it on one end of the line and then put either a one next to it or put a nine next to it, or we could put it between the one and the nine. So first of all, we can't put it on the end of a line because there's a five in this region already and there's a five in this row already. So five definitely has to go somewhere along the middle of our line. Therefore, the five is in between one and nine. This cell by Sudoku contains one of those numbers, one or nine. So because five has to be between those two numbers, it has to be next to that cell. So it's either five here with a one or nine here and another one or nine up here. Specifically, this would be a one because there's a nine in the region already. Or it's five here with a one or nine here and a one or nine down here. And in this case, this would be a nine because there's a one in the region already. So those are the only two possibilities for where we're going to put our five. In other words, the one and nine are either in these two positions or they're in these two positions. And that's interesting because it means that we know that one and nine are not located anywhere else on the line. Specifically, they are not located up here because they have to be on either side of the five so they can only be in these three spots. And again, the reason we know the five is there is because we know either the one or the nine is there and because five has to be between them, it's gotta be next to this one. So as long as we're not dealing with the five situation on a Dutch whisper line, we have to alternate between high and low, just like a German whisper line, because the only digit on a Dutch whisper line that can go next to both a high digit and a low digit, kind of changing that high, low, high, low, high, low pattern is five. Every other number can only go next to digits that are either high or low. For instance, the number three can only go next to seven, eight, or nine. So three can only go next to high digits. So unless we're looking at five, which we know we're not because it can't go up here, we do know that these two cells have to have a low digit and a high digit in them. Let's focus on the low digit. The low digit that goes in these two cells is not three or four because those are already in this region. It is also not one because one has to be in one of these three cells because it has to be neighboring the five. So the low digit in these two cells is a two. So, Let's go back to this region and see what effect that has. So we know there's a two in one of these two cells now, and it's going to be with a six, seven, or eight, and we don't need to figure out which one yet. So let's go back to this region. So what are the actual digits in these cells? We are missing in this region one, four, five, six, and nine. These two cells can't contain one or nine because then they couldn't be both neighboring five. Like if we put a one or a nine here, how could we put five in between those two numbers? So those can't be one or nine. So the only remaining options for the region that aren't taken already are four, five, and six. So we can pencil mark in four, five, and six in these two cells. And the big move here is we are going to eliminate six from these two cells. How are we going to do that? Well, six on a Dutch whisper line is pretty restricted it can only go next to the digits one or two. Those are the only numbers that are far enough away from six to have a difference of at least four. So if we were to place a six here, it would have to be between the number one and the number two. That's fine here, we could put a one there, but two we just figured out is all the way up here at the top of the line. So we would not be allowed to put a two here because then we'd have no low digit left for this top position on the line. So we can't put six in this cell. We also cannot put six in this cell for the same reason. It would have to go between one and two, but two already has to be our low digit up here at the top. So it can't also go down here. So this is in fact a four, five pair, and this is a six, nine pair. Interesting. 
So whatever, or sorry, it's not a 6-9 pair. I had a, I had a one marked in there. I was looking at that thinking that was, uh, <laughs> that was a little early to settle that. So that's not a one anyways. That's a 4-5 pair, and this is a 1-6-9 triple. There we are. So we now have a 4-5 pair here, meaning that whatever digit goes here has to be able to be adjacent to both the number 4 and the number 5. 1 can't be adjacent to 4 because their difference is only 3. That's not big enough to go along a Dutch whisper line. So this has to be a 9 in order to go between 4 and 5. That means that whichever of these is a 5, the digit on its opposite side must be a 1. Therefore, this can't be the 5, because we can't put a 1 here without conflicting with this one. So, that is a 5, that's a 1, that's a 4, and we can fill out the rest of our Dutch Whisper line using math. So, we need a number that's at least 4 away from 4, and it's not 9, so that has to be an 8. Now we need a number that's at least 4 away from 8 that is not 1 or 4. We could say, oh, it's 2 or 3, but we already worked out that we have to have a 2 up here. So we do know already that that's 3. Then the only remaining number that's far enough away from 3 is 7. The only remaining high digit is 6, and we finish the line with a 2. Let's do the exact same thing over here, but we're going to save a little bit of time because now that we know this is a 9, we can start with the knowledge that this is a 1. So we don't need to deduce that. We know that the remaining digits here are 4, 5, 6, and 9. We know that one of these has to be a 5, because otherwise where would the 5 go along this line? It's the same argument we used here to determine the 5 was in one of those cells. So 5 is in one of these cells, so it's not here. Now wherever the 5 is here, the 1 is on one side of it, and the digit on its opposite side must be a 9. Therefore the 5 can't go here, because I would need to put a second 9 into this region. So this is not a 5. That's my 5, and this is a 9. Now, 1 can't go next to 4. It's not far apart enough, so that has to be a 6. 6 can only also go next to 2. I need a high digit that's far enough away from 2, so this has to be a 7 or 8. This must be a 3 or a 4. It can't be a 4 because of the 4 in the region. So my 4 needs to go here. Then the only remaining digit that's far enough away from 4 is 8. I can also just get that by Sudoku because there's a 7 in this region. And then we're done with this Dutch Whisper line. We can resolve these pairs based on the digits that we filled in on the opposite sides. This 4 tells us that this is a 9 and this is a 4. The 6 here tells us that this is a 1 and this is a 6. So what goes adjacent to a 6 along a Dutch Whisper line? It's not 1 because there's a 1 in the region, so the only other number that's at least 4 away from the 6 is a 2. Now we need to place a 9 and a 5, or a 9 and a 4 in this region still. So let's place the 9 here because 4 is not far enough apart from 2, and we'll place the 4 at the bottom. Very similarly up here, we need a number that's far enough away from 4, so it's going to be an 8. And we need to place a 1 and a 6, and we will put them like that in order to obey the Dutch Whisper rule. Now, all we have left to figure out, aside from classic Sudoku, is these lines. And this is where the last trick in the puzzle comes in. Focus on this cell. So, in German whispers, digits alternate between high and low, right? And high digits are 6, 7, 8, or 9, and low digits are 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, looking across this row, you can see that if this was a high digit, it would be pretty restricted because we already have a 7, an 8, and a 9 in its row. So if it were a high digit, it would have to be a 6. But what if that was a 6? The only number that's ever allowed to go next to 6 on a German Whisper is 1, because you need to have a difference of 5 or more. But there's already a 1 in the row below where we'd be placing the 6, so that breaks. Therefore, we can conclude that this number is low. What are our low digits? 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is either a 3 or a 4. If this is a 3, then this digit could be either an 8 or a 9. If this is a 4, this would have to be a 9, which is no good because of the 9 in the row. So this is a 3, that's an 8, and this digit is a 1 or a 2. Now we can finish this up. So we need the digits 2, 3, and 5 in this column. We'll place a 5 here because of the 2 and 3 we've placed. The 2 will go here because of the 3, and then this will be a 3. 
Now we need a four and a six, which will go in this order because of the six in box five. And we need to place a five and a seven there. And these are going to be one, two, and nine in some unknown order so far. So exact same situation up here. If this was a low digit, then it would have to be a four, but then it would have to go next to a nine, which wouldn't be allowed due to the nine in the row. Therefore, this is a high digit. It can't be a six because six, well, six is also here. You know, I really should have mentioned that there was a four in the column. I'm very focused on um, explaining why that couldn't be a four with German whisper math. And I completely ignored the four in the column staring at me despite having notes in front of me while I'm recording this. So there's your other reason that that's not allowed to be a four is because there is a four in the column. Um, anyways, this can't be a six, of course, because there's a six in the column. So this has to be a seven and it's next to a two. And then this will be either an eight or a nine. So let's finish this up with some Sudoku. So this needs a two, seven, and nine. So we can place a nine here now because we already have a two and seven in the column. So that's an eight. That's now a one, a two, and a nine. And a three by Sudoku. We need to place a one and an eight in this row. And they'll go here and here. We need a two and a seven still in this region. These three cells contain five, six, and nine. There's a five and six in this row. There's a six in this row. And there is a six as our last remaining digit. Now we need one, three, and four here. One and four. And here we have a seven, and we need a five and an eight. And that's how you solve Philip Newman's Dutch and German whispers. Enjoy.